My name is Jefferson Hibedo. I am 49 years old. I am a human resources director. I have a law degree specialized in auditing. My childhood and early teens were all about survival due to a dysfunctional and broken family. Having endured my parents' divorce and suffered moral aggression for my father, as well as physical aggression. This led me to construct a very bad psychological and emotional image about the masculine figure. So I was homosexual and I got even more involved with entities and religion. From a very early age, I was involved with entities. This was hereditary for my family, and I was always very eager for the search for power, believing that I could be someone with a lot of power in the world of entities. By getting involved, dedicating myself, and doing everything that was asked of me, I had a great need due to the discrimination, pain and suffering to prove to people the entire time that I was someone and that I had some worth. In reality, the feeling that I had inside me was that of worthlessness. I didn't feel loved. I thought that my life had no solution. If my financial life was in ruin, my emotional being was in ruin. It was in this context that the Universal Church came into my life. I heard and read articles that mentioned charlatanism and that the Universal Church was a church that robbed people and explored their faith for money. They would say that Bishop Edir Macedo was a charlatan, that the church claimed to heal people of illness that medicine could not, and that people's lives were transformed. But these were all false claims to get people's money. This was when my mum started going to the Universal Church. She was invited. I found myself in a very unfavorable financial situation. I had lost my job and was in debt. My mum saw my financial ruin, since I used to live with her, and she invited me. She just invited me and told me about the meeting for prosperity on Mondays, which had prayers for prosperity and that I could go to church to ask God to change that chapter in my life and for him to open a door for me. I went to the church with this mindset. I'll go. They won't be able to extort me or rob me, which was what I thought would happen. But then I said, well, I'm unemployed and have no money or anything. There is nothing they can take from me because I have nothing to offer. From the first time that I went there, I noticed from the very beginning that it had nothing to do with charlatanism. It had nothing to do with deluding people. Because no one forced me to give anything. No one extorted me. No one harassed me to give them anything. They took me in and welcomed me. They let me be free to understand what the work of the Universal Church was all about. I started attending the meetings and noticed some differences in my life, starting in my inner being, starting from within me, starting from saying, I'm sleeping better, I'm at peace, I'm not as irritated as before. I was feeling happy, joyful and peaceful. And I had found a job which had been my initial objective. I was being taken care of by people who took me in, who didn't judge me or point their finger at me to talk about the situation I was in, or to say, you're gay and you shouldn't be. No, I never suffered with these kinds of comments in the Universal Church. I was never approached this way. I met God, and by meeting God, my life was transformed. I didn't feel harassed, I didn't feel discriminated against.
No one pressured me to take part in a campaign, a purpose of faith or to give money. For example, when I started giving offerings in the church, it was done consciously. It was done voluntarily because I was already understanding that the Word of God teaches us to give offerings to God, to give tithes and return to Him what belongs to Him. It was all voluntary. It was all done from the standpoint of understanding that it was the will of God and not because someone was saying so. Six months later, I had completely let go of the religion I used to commit to. I was already very convicted. I put in more strength and effort to say, God, I want to feel your presence. I want to have you in me. I want my heart to become your sanctuary and my body to become your dwelling place. I started seeking and didn't stop seeking until I had an encounter with God and I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Then my entire life changed. Everything was transformed. I started having a natural interest which is a natural consequence of when we have an encounter with God, to want to show the God that I'd found to other people. I gave myself more to the work of God, to the work of the youth group. Then I received God's calling to become an assistant. I have been an assistant for more than 25 years. I got involved in the work of God and I met someone. Then I got married. I was already completely free from homosexuality. We were happy for 26 years. Today I am a widower. She passed away, but we were happy for 26 years. I have four children. I have 11 grandchildren. My four children are actually stepchildren. They come from a previous relationship she had. She had been married before, but we live in harmony. We get along really well. I can say that we are a family and that we managed to find love. I love them as children. They respect me as their father. And I'm always doing the work of God. I'm currently a volunteer in the Beat Depression Group, where we give people emotional and spiritual support. We help these people so that in the same way that we found in God, in the Holy Spirit, the strength to get out of a situation, they may also find this strength and understand that depression does indeed have a cure. I can say that the main transformation in my inner being is the joy that springs out from within me and the strength to overcome my obstacles. Because the more intimate we become with God and the more we seek the Holy Spirit and have communion with Him, the more we go on to understand what God's will is for our lives. My trust is not in the position I have, the profession I practice, the degree I obtained, the postgraduate education I achieved, the studies in mentoring and coaching I received to develop this kind of work. My trust, first and foremost, is in the Lord Jesus. It is in the Holy Spirit, in the faith that I have, in the conviction and certainty I have that He is with me. For anyone who is hearing my testimony, I want to tell you two things. Firstly, don't believe everything they tell you because anyone can say something, but it doesn't mean that it is true. For a long time, for many years, I believed that the Universal Church was involved in charlatanism. But when I came to the Universal Church, I saw for myself that it was nothing like that. So the message that I have is, if you listen to fake news, allow yourself to accept and embrace the invitation that was given to you and go to a universal church to take part in the meeting that you were invited to. You will be able to see for yourself that what they have been telling you until now is fake news and completely wrong. <laughs>